Chief's mom is a porn star. How do you go to the PTA? I'm there every day with my children. Yet I love what I do. And her kids have no problem with it. You've probably seen more than most kids have seen in their entire life. Probably, yeah. Why? Would you bring a girlfriend home to meet your parents if they were nudists? Wait, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> X-rated or okay? You decide. It's sin the way you're living. Let me tell you something. And it doesn't end there. Wait till you see what happens next. That's coming up right now on Montel. for joining us today. You know, today's show is all about family values, specifically X-rated family values. This show is going to raise some eyebrows, I guarantee you, and a lot of people at home are going to be trying to figure out, oh, I want to call the Montel Williams Show, because the people in this audience are going to have a reaction to this, and you're probably going to get fired up, but it's okay, because by day, what we're talking about today is by day, this lady says that she's a regular mom who takes care of her children, but by night, well, she takes on a whole new job. Take a look at this. Meet Sunset. She doesn't have your average job. But like many working mothers, balancing career and family life can be difficult. Just ask her partner, Kent. This family is anything but normal. Excuse me, you're not part of this conversation. You're not about me. It's kind of hard. You got to go from, okay, being a sex symbol to all of a sudden being mom. But it's harder probably being a mom. Mm -hmm. I love you. It's a lot more to do, a lot more to handle, you know, dealing with problems, issues. But I still love it. You're growing like a princess. Aww. Him and Kent are a lot alike. Because he gets all excited and he starts doing this, you know, and Kent does that too. When he gets real excited, he goes, It's a big style. Uh, he's my best friend, my best friend in the whole world. We're a family, just like everybody else. We're all a team. Look at our happy little family. Another adult moment. There's always something happening. Please welcome Diane and Kent to the show. <laughs> Wait. You know, I, I'm looking in the audience and I'm just looking at people's faces and some people are smiling. A lot of the guys are smiling. <laughs> uh, uh, some of the ladies are smiling. Hey, I gotta stop that. How long have you been in the adult entertainment business? For about 16 years now. 16 years? Yes. How many kids do you have? Uh, actually, I have three. You have three? And the two of you have been married? No, not married. You're a couple now for how long? Well, we've been we've we've been best friends for about six years, and it's been very serious for the last couple. Last couple. So yeah. you're thinking about getting married? You live together, obviously. You yeah, were yes. a couple. You're raising your children together. Yep. Correct. You are her manager. Well, publicist. publicist. They, they, publicist. I, we don't like to use the word manager because it implies that she's got a boss, and, and she I doesn't have, have a boss. I'm her own boss. boss. All right. So <laughs> you're her publicist, but making her available for movies. Right. You also do stints at brothels. Right. She she did. Right. I did. Did you don't do that anymore? No. Right. Well, you did that for a period of time. Sure. While you guys were together, Matthew, you met at a brothel. Well, that's how we met. That's we met. We I met, was her. Actually. She was the the, the <laughs> spokesperson or the, the 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 main model at the Bunny Ranch and was the first adult star to uh, cross over into the world of legal prostitution, and that's what's uh, you know and 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 her industry actually didn't like it at the time. But that being said, I was brought out as a publicist to work for the ranch, and that's how we came to know each other. You were already a big star in the porn industry uh -huh. and then you decide what made you decide I mean you're making money making movies what made you decide to, to go and work at the bunny ranch well I'm a very sexual woman and I that's why I do what I do for a living and uh, I would travel on the road as a showgirl feature dancer and I'd have fans come up to me and approach me and would want to party with me or have sex with me and I wanted to go to a place where I wouldn't get in no trouble everything's all legal. legal, legal, safe. And uh, I wanted to be with my fans, so what's wrong with wanting to have sex with your fans? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm wait, wait, sorry. wait, 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 you said that, you said that. Now take a look at all the faces in this audience. Every face has a different look on it. Like, That's true. What, what's wrong with having sex with your fans? Especially if they're going to pay for it. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily, yes, the yeah, money is good, but it wasn't really about the money. I just, I really enjoyed 
having sex, you know. And she, and, and you know, the thing was, is, <laughs> is that, it, again, the, the, the legal brothels exist only in the state of Nevada. Yes, right? And, Nevada. They, and it's, a, it's a very safe and, 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 a, and, a, and a healthy environment, and it's, a, it's, an oper it's, it's an option, it's a career option, quite frankly, a work option for, for anybody who desires uh, that option. And, and I'm, I'm looking at this row of ladies so right here who, when you said it's an option for anyone who desires that, I'm starting right over here with you. Stand up for a second. Just, just, what do you think about that comment? It's an option for anybody who desires that. Um, I'm just astounded. <laughs> astounded. Career option. Career option? Whoa. I mean, now, wait, the two of you met at the Bunny right, Ranch. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You were at the Bunny Ranch working there. You actually brought your daughter to the Bunny Ranch with you, did you? Well, not? no, I didn't bring her. Not, not to well, work. Well, my daughter, yeah, I've, raised, ranch, I've raised my daughter by myself tell. since she was two years old. So she's been surrounded by the adult industry because I've, I've, I've written for it, I've et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, Betty knew a lot of the working girls. I mean, uh, many of them are mothers themselves. But what do your kids think about this? My kids You're, are how fine with they? it. How old are your kids? Uh, I have a 15-year-old and a five-year-old. So these aren't like little kids. A 15-year-old's got to go to school and like be sitting in the classroom and like, somebody said, I saw your mom last night, yo. <laughs> I saw her. It was pretty. What do you say to him? Uh, you know, I'm not ashamed of what I've done, you know, and I'm fine with it. And, uh, and he's fine with it. I mean, uh, I don't know. You'll have to ask him that. But you, 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 do, you do have to admit that, I mean, what I'm talking about here is, right. is things that are really outside of what is the norm sure. in this country. Right. Sure. sure. And so a person would walk up to you and say, how can you be a good mom when your kid's got to go to school and the other kids, you know somebody else is sitting in that classroom with a 15-year-old going, dude, I saw your mom. She was letting play right, with right. Right. She's right. looking fine, man. Can I come over to your house and have, you know, some some donuts? Well, you know, Betty, my, my daughter told us today that, that, that her her guy friends actually say that they say, hey, can we yeah. come over to your house? I'm there every day with my children. I have dinner with them. I sit there and study with them. I mean, a normal person out there having a normal job, which is fine if that's what they want to do, but they can't, they come home, they have dinner with their kids, they do a little homework with them and send them to bed. Me, I spend a lot of time with my children. I love that and I, I can provide them and give them all the wonderful things that they want. But yet, I love what I do. I'm not ashamed of it. I gotta take a break. We'll come back. We'll meet your kids and find out. We'll meet Diane's 15 year old son and Ken's 17 year old daughter. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> How many movies have you done? Uh, actually, I've only done about maybe all together 300. She was very clever about not overexposing herself, and uh, that I kept see. a demand for her. I, I mean, not. oh, well, yeah. well I guess that's an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> well, today we're talking about family values and what we're calling X-rated family values, and what we're also finding out today is that Every family defines family values differently. You're gonna meet three different sets of families here today at the show that really have a different definition of what their values are. Please welcome Diane and Kent's son and daughter, Zach and Betty, to the show. Hello, hey guys. First off, thanks for being here, one, but you know the question that we have to ask is, you do obviously know what your mom and dad are in, right? The business yes. that they're in. Yes. You've grown up with your dad since age, what, two? Two. In coming home, walking in the room while he's editing things and working on stuff, and he's probably seen more than most kids have seen in, in their entire life. Probably, yeah. But don't you think this is a little odd? How do people react to you about the fact that your parents are in the porn industry? Well, some people react differently. Some people think they have no problem with it. Some people do have a problem with it, but it really doesn't bother me because I've been around it for so long, and to me, it's normal. I've met people in the industry. They're nice people. They're just like everybody else, and it's just never bothered me at all. But now you're, you're getting ready to go off to college, right? Yeah. Soon. I mean, and you go off to college, you have a picture of mom and dad on your, you know, your little nightstand in your dorm, and, you know, one of the other guys come in the dorm and says, Dad, I, I, if I see your mom, what, how do you react to that? That's her job. That's what she wants to do, and that's, I have no problem with it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect what I want to do and what I will do in the future, so it's fine. Zach, what about you? I mean, most guys are ready to stand up, you know, and, and defend their mother. Somebody come in and say, you know, your mom's a this, your mom's a that. You know, guys jump up in the classroom ready to hook and jab. But you got to stand up and say, yeah, so what? Because they may come in and say, your mom's a porn star, your mom's a this, your mom's a that. 
Do you defend her? What do you do? I just like the same thing as Betty says. I don't care. She does what she does. She helps us live, and that's it. Doesn't matter what she works. How old are you now? You're 15. 15. 15. So when you go to school, do people come up to you and say anything at all about this? Well, obviously, at 15, they're, they're smart enough to navigate the internet. So, and how many movies have you done? Uh, actually, I've only done about maybe all together 300. <laughs> Wait, to wait, but see, years. but see, wait, everybody, everybody in the audience laugh because they don't understand that majority of people who work in this industry do how many movies are the uh, average? Oh, my God, they'll shoot like... You, you'll have girls in the industry who have worked for a couple of years and they'll brag, I've done 300 films in, 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 in a couple of years. I mean, because they, they're in it for just the money or for whatever reasons. She was very clever about not overexposing herself, and uh, that kept a demand for her. I, I mean, my... Oh, well, yeah. well I guess that's an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Very clever and not over overexposed herself, so she spread the 300 movies out over time. Yeah. yeah, you know, but most of those films take a day to shoot. I mean, that's it. So they can they can knock off, a, a, you know, a, a few. A few, uh, a few films in a, a and, week. And I'm, if, I'm if a showgirl, so I travel a lot, you know, so I'm out there around the fans at the clubs and things like that. So, so when it, it, neither one of you guys have been on the road with her when she's on the road. Oh. And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, just hanging out with mom, staying at the hotel while she's working, but you don't even travel when she travels, right? Mm -mm. I just find it hard to figure out, like, how do you go to the PTA? The cool thing is, is people will come up to me that's never seen a porno movie on me, magazines or anything, and just look at me and go, you're Santa Thomas from HBO. Yeah. They never like to, oh, you're the girl that worked at the whorehouse at HBO. It's, you're Santa Thomas from HBO. Yeah. So they don't even put the two and two together. Well, oh. they do put it together. Well, they do, well, but they, they look do, at her as a TV actress almost more HBO than they look now. at her as a reality TV show. It's very odd, but it's, but, it's but that odd. being said, if people do recognize her, I think most people are discreet. They they don't they, they don't want to get in your yeah, face. Yeah, most guys sitting with their wives going, <laughs> well, I've seen that before in my life. <laughs> I, 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 I know that she is. Exactly. <laughs> Who's going to admit it? <laughs> All right, let me take a little break. But we're talking about different family values. Now, this is one set of family values, and obviously, it works for your family, right? Does it work okay? Yeah. You're not getting, you're not being beat up when you go to school, laughed no. out of school, you're no. so ashamed of yourself, you can't walk out your door, right? All right, well, we're going to come back, we're going to meet another family, and they define their family values as kind of like they're naturalist, right? That's the term, naturalist. Do you know what a naturalist is? How many people know what a naturalist is? Raise your hand. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Everybody, everybody who knows what a natural, naturalist is, stand up for a second. Stand up right now. Okay, so since you all know what a naturalist is, I'd like you to show the rest of the country what it is. <laughs> Start, take off your clothes right now. We'll be back right after this. Take them off. Come on. Take them off. My oldest son, I met his, his wife, now wife, then girlfriend. First time she met us, we were naked, and she was naked. <laughs> Try meeting your, your folks' parents like that. All right. introduce you to our next couple. Now, this is Stephen and Linda right here. Look at them. Very, very nice couple, right? Look like the average typical couple. But this is also Stephen and Linda in their family portrait. I see some people kind of raise their eyebrows a little bit because Stephen and Linda call themselves naturists, which means that they prefer to hang out most of the time in the buff. And not only do they do that around the house, but you also run your own nudist camp, and their son has grown up this way. Please welcome them both to the show. Welcome them. Thank you. Stephen, I, I, I gotta explain this to me so we understand. You were not part of this to begin with. I know you weren't. Oh. Let's talk about your I thought it was the strangest, most perverted thing I'd ever heard of in my whole life. You grew up in a traditional Christian... My folk. godfather founded the Billy Graham Association, ran it until his death. Oh, dang. Um, I Ooh. went to uh, boarding school, and she used to uh, tell people that I was so straight that I could sleep in a three-piece suit and it wouldn't wrinkle. <laughs> so you start going out with this guy. And he's almost so close to that, is it? <laughs> well, you start going out with him and talking to him, and then one day... Now, did you tell him that you were a naturist before you showed up the beach that day? I didn't even know really I was a naturist. Okay. I just knew I liked to go sunbathing in the nude. So, and kind of... Everybody did it. So you and all your friends were hanging out. You had a group of friends. Oh, yeah. And you were always yeah. taking your clothes off. Yeah. At least I don't know. You were in a nude, yeah. going sunbathing, hanging out in the park. And very comfortable with it. Guys, girls, friends. Yes. So you go to the beach one day with, with him, 
and you're hanging out at the beach, and all everybody just takes their clothes off and goes yeah. running. Oh, it's worse beach. than that. What happened? Her friend had an airplane. Mm -hmm. Flies us to this little terrible island out in the Gulf of Mexico called Matagorda. Everybody drags the cooler down to the beach. I don't know any of these people. They get to the beach. Everybody's taking their clothes off. I grab her by the arm and go marching her down the beach, and I'm berating her and carrying and on. You and said what to him? Oh, what's the big deal? What's wrong? I naturally assumed he also went sunbathing in the nude. And um, then that day you sat up there and moped around the cooler for a while, sucked down three pouting, or four yes. beers, pouting, realized that Let's the relationship was over. It's either either <laughs> you take your clothes off or the relationship is off. Pretty much the case. And you said, my clothes are coming off. He came down. And, yes. and 30 years later, because we've been married 30 years this summer, I will tell you, it's, it, and people find this strange, but a big part of the closeness and the openness uh, with our family is living within a naturist environment. Now, I mean, you, you think about it, and everybody says, oh, I could never do that. I'm too fat, I'm, I'm, I'm too thin, I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too all of these things. That's not what it's about. Well, explain to me what it is about, because, I, look, I get it. I, I got a whole bunch of friends, like my mom, my dad, my friends. I'm not sitting around the house with my mom and dad sitting at the table naked. It's I like, am. I, oh, yeah, I know, but I'm, I, I get it, but it's just, it's, it's, there's no reason for me to want to be there with look, my mom and dad. There's, there's, there's two things, two, there, there are a number of things that, that naturism helps and being a nudist helps. One is all of us dress to highlight what we think our best features are mm -hmm. and to minimize what we think our worst features are. And we want to telegraph to the world who we are. Whether I'm a punk and I'm gonna dress that way because I want people to know it, or I'm a rich businessman and I want my Gucci loafers and Armani's, I'm gonna telegraph that. A nudist uh -huh. has to rely on the personality. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but while you were saying that, you're talking about how a nudist relies on personality. Now I'm watching the screen of a whole bunch of dudes playing volleyball naked. Oh. And it's like, it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, I, I, it, or act like you wouldn't be distracted either. Calm down. Huh? But you see, the, the the other part of that is that. Especially raising children in this environment. That's one, because people must complain to oh, you. You guys no. must be a bunch of perverts, got kids running around, all these pedophiles out there, no. all these adults looking at these little children no. with no clothes on, a bunch of freaky things. Absol right? Absolutely the opposite. Um, uh, raising children in this environment, first of all, teaches them to have respect for their bodies. Why? Because they are assaulted in the media with sexy images. You've got Christina Aguilera, you've got Britney Spears, you've got the skin, and Americans in particular, and we've lived outside the States most of our life, um, want to equate nudity and sex. The two don't always equate. Sometimes nudity is just nudity. I want to meet some members of your family, and we'll talk about They're this. Here. You raised your kids this way. Yes. Yes. And as a matter of fact, now your son, who was raised a naturist, yes. now prefers to wear clothes. Yes. And am I upset about it? Of course not. The boy grows up, he makes his own choices. Our two older children are still naturists. My oldest son, I met his, his wife, now wife, then girlfriend. First time she met us, we were naked, and she was naked. <laughs> Try meeting your, your folks' parents like that. All right, I, I'm gonna go to break. We'll be back, we'll talk more. This lady's got a question. I'm gonna get it when we come back. We'll be back right after this. It's sin, and God calls it sin, and the Bible says the soul that sinneth shall die. I have a and great relationship good. with the Lord, and thank God you're not his spokesman. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, you had a question for Stephen Olympia. Well, I think that living in a community like that, you would have a personal agenda, first of all. And second of all, I don't believe that children should be raised in that environment. Bad enough, kids with clothes on are being abused. I mean, I don't understand how you don't think your children would be attractive to some pedophile or somebody that just wants to infiltrate this uh, community you have. Well, first of all, it's, it's a common misconception. Um, everybody assumes, again, where there's smoke, there's fire, where there's nudity or where there's kids or whatever. And it's interesting because I, I, a number of months ago, debated Congressman Mark Foley. Anybody remember him? Mm -hmm. sure. Yes. He was investigating. Uh, we have camps where kids, not at our place, but others, where they go for uh, like any camping experience. Um, they've been around for 14 years. We have never had one 
incident. Now think about it, one incident of a child being abused in 14 years. Here's the thing that's, that, that wears me out about this. And again, if we were talking about an organization that got together because they were swappers or they were uh, a group of uh, different groups, a dating organization, these are people who just like to go hang out on sandy beaches without their clothes on. It's all up here, you know, after a while. Like I know what's said, going on up here. After the third time you looked at yourself. Uh huh. You forget about that you're naked. Look, and we're now we're all just talking one-to-one -one and we're just finding out, you know, everyday life. It's not what we look like down here. We don't care for red, white, big, little, you know, wearing the Gucci's like he says. Or well, what you, I guess what we can understand is that, again, you, you've raised children in this lifestyle. And now your son hasn't turned his back on it, but he just prefers to wear clothes. Please welcome Stephen and Linda's son, Alex, and his girlfriend, Jessica, to the show. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Yes. How old are you? Uh, 19. 19. How old are you? 20. 20. So you, the two of you, Matt, you, Alex, you grew up this way for a while, right? My entire life. Your entire life. And then you've hit a point now where you prefer to wear clothes. Yes, I like clothes. So You like clothes? Wear... <laughs> swimming trunks. Well, I mean, I, when I go swimming, yeah, I wear trunks, but I just like clothes better than being nude. Yeah. And... So now you, you, the two of you meet. He tells you that his family's this way. You said, nah, come on, are you right? Are you serious? But then you rolled over to the house. Tell me about the fir your first time you met them, they had clothes on, right? Yes. Second time you met them, though, what? You know, I don't really recall. I mean, after, this sounds weird, I know, but after the first few times I went to the resort, you, like they said, you just kind of forget about it. You get used to it. And I, I, I'm from like a very conservative household, both my parents very Christian and conservative, and when I met Alex, he was just really great, and I wanted to get to know his family, and so I did, and it just wasn't a big deal. But wait a minute, but when you go over the house now, Alex, you're hanging out up in the house with your trunks on, and you get naked with them. Well, I wouldn't put it well, that way. Well, not naked with them, but you... But... <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, you embrace the new lifestyle. Yeah. I know you got a problem with this, don't you? This lady, hold on, you got a problem with this too. Hold on, let me, let me, let me, uh, stand, both of y'all stand up, come here. Let's do it at the same time, let's see, what's your, what's your problem? Yeah, in other words, number one, lest this thing get spread out and everybody think that in Christendom that this is the way Christ w would have people to live. Nothing could be farther from the truth. It's right. God's will that you be clothed and while we're on you, the way you live, there is no way in the let, world let me tell you that something. God can condone. I'm gonna tell you something. You're right. Because I gotta pay some bills. But don't stop. I'm gonna get you in. Wait a second, I'm gonna let you in. I would like to respond. I'll be back right after this. Thank you. <laughs> Kent, you wanted to say something. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I wanted to respond. Uh, yeah, I wanted to respond, to gentlemen. Now, I am a, I, I'm a Catholic. I go to church three, four times a week. I was elected at Old St. Patrick's Cathedral Church. Two scripture passages come to mind. Jesus in Matthew 7 saying, uh, why do you bother with the speck of dust in your brother's eye when you have a plank in your own? B, when Christ in Matthew 21 addressed the Pharisees and the rabbis, the people who took everything literally, he said, I tell you, the prostitutes and the tax collectors will enter the kingdom of heaven before you. Because being a Christian and being as Christ would be is about compassion, loving your neighbor as you would love yourself, being understanding that's what a Christian is, not a haggard who says, don't be gay, don't be this, and then go from Schwartz right, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Now, what I am going to do right now is, because I did give you an opportunity to identify your views on Christianity, yeah. I've just given his, his views on Christianity, I'm going to stop the religious thing right now, because it's not, come on, give me another argument. Other okay, than I, okay, the other argument. Just in case this thing goes out, and it will go out, maybe no one have ever told you just what the real deal was. Some people refer to it as being immoral, but let me call it just exactly what it is. It's sin the way you're living, my friend. That's exactly what it is. We're not going to go with the immoral thing. It's sin, and God calls it sin, and the Bible says the soul that sinneth shall die. I have a and great relationship with the Lord, and thank God you're not his spokesman. <laughs> Uh, you know, right, right now, wait, right, right, wait, 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 right this second. I'm starting to feel just a little heat. I don't know where it's coming from, but I, I, I feel like I feel like I must be sitting just talking about this. But I, I, first couple, how how do you show each other your love when you're with all these other men? I mean, what do you know that's intimate between you, only you? Go ahead. Well. 
to, it, from my perspective, huh? the, I, um, you know, Sunset Thomas is who she becomes. Diane is the woman that I'm in love with. I work for Sunset Thomas, and yes, you're right, it's the same body, the same mouth, the same body parts, and there's no denying that. And it is, it, there is a little, there, it is a twist, it is something that's not, it, it takes some refinement and, 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 and insight to yourself, but I love her, and we're in love with each other, and we're making love, we're making love. And we're there. There, these other people are acting, and they are with Sunset it's Thomas. It's different when you act. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, ma'am. Stand up here. You got something to say about that why, one? Why? Why haven't you married her? We what are is engaged. the matter with marriage? We're engaged. We're engaged right now. Okay, when are you getting married? Another uh, 16 years? Yeah, but you know what? Hold on, man. Come on. I there's a, there's a lot of people out there that aren't married. You got a lot of but celebrities that aren't married. this is adultery. Well, no, no, no. We're not afraid of marriage. There's no, there's I'm no... not afraid of marriage. I just believe because I have been married before. I was married for 10 years. I believe to spend and be with someone for a couple of years and see how things go before you jump into a marriage because I went through a really bad divorce and I don't want to go for that again. So what's wrong with living with someone, getting to know each other, and, and make sure and it works out? And probably the honest truth is the majority of people in America today are living together for at least two years before they even walk down the aisle. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But, but, right. but that's what's happening in this society. My I mean, child. what am I... Yes, ma'am. Well, well, you my, know, but, but wait, wait, yes, Stephen? Um, we, we do a number of surveys within our association because there are 260 nature's clubs throughout the United States. Only four states don't have nudist clubs. In any event, the divorce rate among nudists is two-thirds less than the general population. We have slightly more children than the general population, <laughs> and we attend... I wonder why. <laughs> we attend church slightly more often than the general population. And all I can tell you is we've been married 30 years in an era when anybody making it five is considered a big I would a say deal. in an era where the majority of marriages and about 60% of marriages, though the divorce rate is going down finally, up until about five years ago, it reached an all-time high of about 59% of current marriages. So I get what you're saying. You had another seven Yes, ma'am. My only comment is that as far as making it into a religious conversation, I know that's difficult because there's so much controversy, but God is of love, and he does love the ones that like to get naked. He loves the, the ones that like to do pornography. He does love us all, and we shouldn't judge each other, but we do have responsibilities when we are his. Yeah, you know what? I mean, here's, here's the thing about it. And, and this is just like what happened recently in the media when, you know, a, a, a person who was a, a radio DJ made a statement and everybody said, you know, you're, you have a right to freedom of speech. You do. Everyone has a right to freedom of speech. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to be held accountable for what you say. You have a right to your lifestyle. Accountability really is not the right term, but people have the right to at least question it. And I'm glad that you guys are willing to sit here and talk about it. You've been talking about it openly because that's what we're talking about today, a difference in values okay. for you. Will you re-embrace this? What happens if, if I'm, I'm gonna jump y'all ahead three years, you decide to get married, oh, go ahead, your father can hear about it right now. You're gonna get married, then you get married, and then she decides that she really wants to embrace the naturist lifestyle. Now you're all caught up wearing clothes again. What happens when the baby comes? You gonna let the baby be a naturist or what? That's a tough question, but if I love her and she's really into being a naturist, then I guess I'll be a naturist. And as far as raising the child goes, I mean, as a child, I learned a lot being a naturist. You learn a lot more values, become in touch with, uh, you learn to see people for not what they're wearing, not what they're doing, but who they really are. Mm -hmm. So, and when you're a kid, you're naked anyway, until you're like, what, three or something? Sure. So, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> you're either you're naked or you're taking your clothes off anyway, yeah. <laughs> rubbing stuff all over the wall. What do you think of him as a, a, obviously you've dated other people before him, or have you had other boyfriends before? Yeah. What do you think, how does he stack up as a boyfriend? <laughs> in the world of guys of this this era you know most guys have one thing in their mind i would imagine that you know it wasn't the, the most important thing on his mind wasn't getting you naked as quickly as possible <laughs> right <laughs> or maybe i'm wrong no um <laughs> wait i'm sorry what was the question <laughs> let's think about it go to break and i'll ask you when i come back we'll be back right after this <laughs> Well, please welcome Judge Lynn Toller to the show. You know her because she's now the new judge in the divorce court, but she also has a brand new book out that's called My Mother's Rules. 
Judge Lynn Toller, thank you so much for being here on thank the show. Thank you so much for having me, You Montel. know, now you see, I, I watch people's court from time to time. You see everything there is on that show. Everything and then some stuff we don't let you see. This is true. <laughs> You're not, absolutely. And you can't say that. And today we're getting a chance to see some stuff that might end up on your show. Because, in fact, these, these couples Could. were having issues, but they don't. Nope. But you're very opinionated about this. And just from the state of divorce, the state of marriage, the state of relationships, what do you think about what I've shown you so far? Because I said this about family values, a different type of values. Right. What do you think about the values I'm showing you so far today? Well, okay, first of all, I have to say this. I love the way you've approached it with a sense of humor. That's one of my mantras. Difference, oddness, other behaviors got to be approached with a sense of humor. If we get angry, we get upset, get to hollering and pointing, we never get anything resolved. And, right. I, and I like that and I appreciate that. Gotcha. Family values. Family values in part is what works for you. But in addition, you must understand that everything you do has ramifications beyond what you do and where you are. Now, I've got to tell the naturalist, I was right with you there. Here is the only concern I have. It is fine living in left field. I've lived in left field a lot of my life. But you have to let, you have to let your children walk into left field on their own. So all I'm saying is, once you're 18, rock and roll. Watch the children. And the only other thing I have to say is, true, there have, may not have been any reports uh, of, 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 of... Molestation or... Uh, molestation. But I'm sure out of the hundreds of years of the Catholic Church, there were 14 years where they didn't have any reports either. There is no segment of society that is without a nut, a creep, a goofball, or whatever. So do not believe simply because there isn't a report and that some... Some conscious pedophiles might not look toward you. So, I'm just saying, so, be so, cognizant. So, so there, Don't be unrealistic. At the nudist camp, there could really be a wolf in... No clothing. No clothing. <laughs> a wolf in, in no, no clothing. clothing. All right, it, well now, it can happen. So now, see, I wanted your opinion on this because now I, 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 I get what you feel about the, the naturist. Mm -hmm. and I get how you feel about pornography in right. that whole world. But, you know, I'm about to introduce you to a couple. And you've heard about this, Judge. Yes. I know you have. Yes. It's a new thing. It's called polyamory. Polyamory means that you have the ability to love more than one person. So as if you're in a relationship, you might be married, but if you both you and your spouse are polyamorous, that spouse can have multiple relationships at the same time that you are legitimizing because you as a spouse may, like if I and the judge were married, and this Not might a bad be idea. I, we're, we're, <laughs> we're the we're the primary relationship. He could be your secondary relationship. Right. She could be my secondary relationship. I could have a third relationship, <laughs> and you could have. I'll take him. <laughs> take him. You have, you have, you have a third relationship. <laughs> And now wait, and now, and wait, and I, there might be occasions right. where you and I, Mary, could be sitting there at a dinner, not naked, but have a, I could be sitting there with her, mm -hmm. you be sitting there with him, and it's okay. It's okay. Do, it's not, you, I'm not okay with it, okay. for a number of reasons. All right, well, let, let's, uh, look, Robin is a mother of three who says that she could never just be with one partner, so she is now with three. Take a look at this. Polyamory is multiple relationships with more than one person with loving relationships being the emphasis. Monogamy for me was something that was forced, and I was lying and I cheated, and I didn't feel comfortable with that. That wasn't who I wanted to be. When I first learned about polyamory, um, that there were other people out there, it was like this big, huge discovery. It was awesome. When my son David was 11, we came out to him as being poly. We didn't want him or any of our children to think that we were cheating or that our marriage was in trouble. We wanted them to feel safe and secure. And to my surprise, he thought it was kind of cool. Currently, I'm in three relationships. When I first met Robin, we just sat down and chatted and immediately connected right there. The communication that he and I have and the way that we're able to talk so honestly about things has just been awesome. It makes me love her more, knowing just how much love she feels for somebody else. A lot of people will come into polyamory looking for sex or thinking that's what it's about. And it's not about sex, it's about relationships. But one of the hard things about polyamory can having is having two partners break up with you in one week. But the other good side is having another partner who can be there for you. We'll find out about this when we come back. We'll be back right after this.
So Robin is a mother of three, and you've been involved in this polyamory lifestyle, if you will, even though you didn't have a name for it back then, but since age 24. Yes. So for about 12, 13, 14 years, somewhere in there. A little bit longer. A little longer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you have not been in a, in a monogamous relationship as such since what, mid-20s? Yeah, since my mid-20s, basically. Uh, how does this lifestyle affect, like, your kids? You're, you have three children. Uh, your, your kids must see these multiple partners coming in and out, coming in and out, and I have to get to know a new Uncle Bobby, a new Uncle Bobby, a new Uncle Bobby every couple of days. Or no? Well, no, not every couple of days. Or every couple of months. <laughs> um, basically, for my kids, it's been, uh, with my younger two, they grew up in this. They didn't really know any different. Mm -hmm. And they've never seen anything any different. So how do you explain it to them? Mommy doesn't have a husband. Mommy doesn't have a boyfriend. Mommy has a couple of boyfriends. Well, I did have a husband. Okay. Uh, we were in an open polyamorous marriage for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And that's what they grew up in. And so they've had family. They've had um, a father and a mother in their lives and stability. Uh, basically, later on, they got to see other relationships that come into my life. Some are important. Some of my relationships, one of them I've been involved with for 21 years. So longer than my husband. <laughs> But how do you juggle, Jen? Samantha, do you fill out a calendar? Okay, Bill, you have Monday through Thursday. Steve, you have Friday through Sunday morning. Um, basically, yeah, we, we do calendar very well. <laughs> so, am I, wait, am I missing out on something here then? <laughs> some part of it seems like it might be a good idea somewhere. <laughs> Judge, is there something I'm missing out on? Not that I can see. Uh, no. Not that I can see. My concern is the concern that you went to first with is the chill are the children okay? And let me ask you about it this way. Well, let me show it, bring it to you this way. I've um, uh, mentored a lot of at risk girls. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems they had is they had single mothers and a new guy in the house. Children love stability. They want to know that the same thing happened yesterday, is gonna to happen today, is going to happen tomorrow. When you have these different men come through, different influences, a different level of authority or any kind of interest in them, don't you have a concern about the level of stability that they do have? I actually believe that the level of stability that my kids have had has been very good. But they, you... have, they have myself, they have their father, they know who we are. They have a good communication. When there are problems, we are willing to listen to them because we have good communication skills. You have to be polyamorous. And my children have felt supported in their lives, but we all have change in our lives. And to protect our children all the time from change, I think, is not necessarily a good thing. I was in a 17-year poly marriage. Mm -hmm. And so my kids have had that stability of having two parents being there and being there for them. And like many, we are in the process of a divorce right now. And, and wait, but so they, they not only had the two parents there, but they also recognized that two parents could have all, multiple relationships. Now your son, yes. who's 19, is now polyamorous. Yes. Wait, please welcome Robin's son, David, to the show. David, how are you? Have a seat. You're polyamorous, right? Yes, I am. And and so I'm going back to what the judge is saying, though. If that's the, if that's the, and I'm not trying to knock lifestyles, but it's aberrant when it comes to the rest of the population. You're 19. At 19, you really haven't even started down the path of being in real relationships yet. Uh, I would disagree with that. Oh, you think this is a real relationship you're in right now? Um, I've been in a relationship for three years. And I'm still going to say at age 19, yeah, you no, haven't even reached what a real relationship is yet. Don't know. But we will disagree. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. I'll get more opinions on it.